tuko kuabudu tuko hapa bwana kuliinua jina lako tuko hapa mfalme kukuheshimu kwa kuwa unastahili heshima na utukufu katika jina la Yesu haleluya tulio ndani tuweze kusimama ili tukaweke kumwabudu bwana Yesu asante Yesu
wakati wa dhuri siku njema ambayo umetupa mfano wa falme tunakuinua tunakubariki na tunakupa sifa Mungu ishi milele asante kwa yale ambayo umetenda katika maisha yetu asante kwa wokovu ambao umetupa asante kwa uhai ambao umetupa asante kwa nafasi njema ambayo umetupa Mungu ishi milele ili tukashiriki pamoja katika uwepo wako mfano wa falme asante kwa ajili ya kila mmoja ambaye anaungana nasi kwenye hii bada akiwa hapa karibu na kiwa mbali hasa kwa njia ya mtandao mfalme wa falme tunaomba baraka kwa kila mmoja wetu siku ya leo na neno ambalo umetuandalia baba wa mbinguni tunaomba likapate nafasi katika mioyo yetu na likatende kusudi lako katika jina la Yesu Kristo baba wa mbinguni ni asante tunanyekea kwako na tunakubali mfalme wa falme kupata kutawala na kupata kutamalaki maisha yetu katika jina la Yesu Kristo tunaomba na tunaamini Amen and amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Amen. Na naomba sauti. Ah twashukuru Mungu siku ya leo. Ah yeye ni mwema na yeye ni mwaminifu. Ah kisha ni kushukuru wewe ambao umeungana pamoja nasi. Umekuja kwenye ibada na unaungana nasi kwenye mtandao. Karibu sana tukaweze kubarikiwa pamoja. Kisha naomba tukaweze kuketi katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Sandeni sana waimbaji, kazi nzuri ambayo umefanya. Mungu wetu wabariki na azidi kuwatendea mema. Aa, ni siku ambayo Mungu ameifanya na ameiandaa kwa ajili yetu. Nasi ametuandaa ili tukaweze kupokea kile ambacho anazungumza kwa sababu ya maisha yetu. Aa, na shukuru kwa nafasi hii ambao nimepata na nimeneemeshwa ili tukaweze kushiriki neno la Mungu pamoja. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Haleluya. Haleluya. Amen and amen. Tufungue Biblia zetu kwenye kitabu cha Luka. Uh, the Gospel according to Luke chapter 19 we read a story there story ambayo najua wengi wetu wanaifahamu hata ni vizuri kila wakati kunyenyekea na kusikiza Mungu anasema nini uh, the story of Zacchaeus the tax collector hivyo tunasoma mstari wa kwanza mpaka wa kumi. Luke chapter 19 verses 1 to 10 and I read Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through a man was there by the name Zacchaeus he was a chief tax collector and was wealthy he wanted to see who Jesus was because and but because he was short he could not see over the crowd so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since jesus was coming that way when jesus reached, uh, reached the spot he looked up and said to him zacchaeus come down immediately i must stay at your house today so he came down at once and welcomed him gladly all the people saw this and began to mutter or to muter he was uh, he has got, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner but zacchaeus stood up and said to the lord look lord here and now i give half of my possessions to the poor and if i have cheated anybody out of anything i will pay back four times the amount jesus said to him today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of abraham for the son of man came to seek and to save the lost Our Lord we thank you once again and thank you for your word and we appreciate the intention that you have for this word today 
And we pray that it will be done in our lives, oh my dear Redeemer. As I speak this word from this altar, Lord, I pray that you will use me as you will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Wakati uduma ya Yesu, alikuwa na interaction na watu wengi. Na kati ya wale ali interact na wao ni Zacchaeus. The Bible tells us that Zacchaeus was a tax collector. That was his for, uh, profession. And uh, specifically, uh, the Bible tells us that this man, he was a, a, a high, a high official, high-ranking official. Uh, the Bible records that he was a chief tax collector. So alikuwa mkubwa wa wale watoza ushuru. Na nyumae kidogo, Jesus had interacted with uh, several tax collectors. And one of them is Levi, whom he called to be one of his disciples. Uh, the other tax collector, Jesus gave an example or a parable about the Pharisee and uh, the tax collector. Uh, this is a man, when the two of them were praying, uh, the tax collector uh, humbled himself in salt for the mercies of God, confessed his sins and repented. And uh, his prayers were heard besides those of the, or uh, apart from those of the Pharisee. So at that time now, Jesus meets another tax collector. This is Zacchaeus. And as we continue to read through the, uh, the ministry of Jesus, another time Jesus is meeting a tax collector is when the tax collector came to ask for uh, their, 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 um, their tax. For Jesus' task and Peter's tax. So to say that Jesus knew who tax collectors were and he knew their work and he knew their operations. And each and every time we see him interacting with these people, he interacts with them at different capacities on different occasions. And from each of them, we learn a lesson. And the lesson that Zacchaeus, the tax collector submit to us to today, is about changing our lives. Changing our lives. And for you to desire a change or to have a change in your life, then it means that you must be tired of the way your life is, the way the situation is, the way the position of your life is. And the moment you get to that, to that point, uh, that uh, I am tired of this life, I need a change. Then now the, 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 the desire for change starts to grow in you. And it's a true indication that you desire to grow. Because any person who desires a change in life, that's a true indicator that this person wants to grow. This person wants to embrace new phase of life. One of the renowned uh, 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 preachers, uh, televangelists, said, If you want to go or to grow in life, then you must be tired of where you are right now. Because if you don't get tired, it means that you remain in the same position. It means that you're comfortable. It means that things are running well and you don't want anything else in your life. Of which is not supposed to be so. For every person, for every believer, for every Christian, there should be this desire in heart and in mind that I need a change. 
things must change. How can I have a change in my life? How can things work better in my life? And that one should be continuous each and every day. And so we see this in Zacchaeus, that he was tired of the way his life was, and he decided to have a change, and he desired that change. And the moment you express your desire to God, the Bible tells us that we commit our desires to God, and he will grant them. So, the change that we anticipate, or the change, the change that we want, there is the one who gives that change. There is the one who is able to facilitate that change. There is one who is able to do that change in our lives. And that is God. So meaning that God wants to change our lives. And he can. He has that ability. He has that power. And if we submit to him, then he will do it. And he will give us that change. And each and every one of us has an opportunity, has a, ch a chance for change in life. So, it now remains upon ourselves. Do we get that change? I mean, do we get that opportunity? And once that opportunity is presented to us, how do we make use of it? Jesus entered Jericho and the Bible records that he was just passing by. So at this particular time, nothing specific that Jesus was coming to do in Jericho. He was just on his way to his mission. And uh, as it was norm or normal that people used to follow Jesus, so a big crowd followed Jesus. Then this man, I want to assume now he was working in this town. And he had his office or his station in Jericho. So he heard that Jesus was passing by. The Bible records that in his profession, as a tax collector, he was a wealthy man. So he desired so much he overheard that I want to see this Jesus. So meaning that there before, he had not seen him. But now, the opportunity presents itself to him that Jesus is passing by the town. So he desired to see Jesus. And he wanted to see him. So, but he had this challenge. He had this difficult. That the Bible records that he was a short man. And if the Bible says that this man was short, then we must agree that he was short. He could not see ahead. He could not see far. So his height could not allow him to see through the crowd. Yesterday I talked of a divine strategy. Divine idea. Godly idea. As we talked about Jacob. But still the same I see in Zacchaeus. That a divine idea came to him. Because he wanted and he desired to see Jesus. And nobody could help him. But all of a sudden there was a tree. A sycamore fig tree. So this idea told him. You climb up this tree. Then from there you will be able to see Jesus. And he obeyed. Not caring about his status, not caring about his profession, not caring about what people will say. So he climbed up the tree. And because the desire was there, and you know that desire creates determination in you. So out of it is desire, a determination was born that I must see Jesus today. So, and we know that determination knows no barrier. So there was nothing 
to buy to, 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 to buy him from seeing Jesus. Of course, the crowd was an entrance. His status in the society as a chief tax collector was an entrance. His wealthy was an entrance. But he decided to overcome all this. Because what would come up in people's minds seeing a very wealthy man climbing a tree? What would answer kuongea and answer kusema huyu mejikosea shima, huyu akona tabia mbaya, and all that. But he said, I don't care. What I care is that I want to see Jesus and I must see him today. This is the very opportunity that I have. If he passes by without missing him, then it means that that is, that is it. That is done. I don't have another day. I don't have another chance. So he did what he could do at the moment to see Jesus. He climbed upon a tree. His pride aside, his profession aside, his wealth aside, and all that. He humbled himself. And from the tree, Jesus came to that spot. And Jesus knew that there is somebody upon, uh, 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 upon this tree. We are not given the details whether ni watu alimuambia ama alimuona akipanda. But knowing Jesus as God, he knows everything. So he came to that spot, he looked up, and he saw this man. Surprising enough, he called him by his name. Meaning that he was a renowned person. But even besides being renowned, because of profession, our God knows us. The Bible tells us that he calls us by our names. We are not hidden from him. He knows each and every one of us. So he called him by name. And he told him that you must come down. And he said immediately, the reason being that today I must go into your house. I must stay with you. And of course, out of humility, the man came down and he invited Jesus into his home. Then from his home now, uh, I want to understand because he was a wealthy man then there must have been a feast. So something was prepared for Jesus together with his guests and the other people came around. Leave alone those who are just murmuring and muttering and all that. And as they were celebrating and feasting together, time came for speeches. And this man stood up as the host and the owner of the house. And he told Jesus, and because he knew himself, he knew his character. And you know that you cannot lie to yourself. You know yourself very well. Even though people knew him as a, as a sinner, as a chief tax collector, and a sinner, that's why they were murmuring and saying that Jesus today has gone to eat with a sinner. But besides what people know or knew about this man, he knew himself very well. And he knew that I cannot lie to Jesus, I cannot lie to myself. So he stood up and he made a very big and bold confession that Jesus, I know that I am rich, but my wealth is not upright, is not straight. I have taken things from people. I have cheated people. I have owned that which doesn't belong to me. But I am willing to share with the poor or to give it to the poor. 
And because he had a record of how he got his wealth, and of course the people whom he had cheated and he had lied to, he said, and these people, I will return to them four times. It means that this man knew the law. Because that was the law, if a thief is caught, then he must pay four times. So he knew that that, that law, that rule applies. So he said, I will, I will return four times. So this is a step of confession. This is a step of uh, 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 um, be being, uh, being transparent to God. Being honest. Not hiding anything. And when it came the turn for Jesus to speak, then he told him, then today, salvation has come to this house. Because this man also, now telling other people, this man, this man called Zacchaeus, is also a son of Abraham. Then he made a very strong comment there, verse number 10, for the son of man, now referring to himself, that the son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost. And there goes the story. The moment you have the desire to see Jesus, to meet him, nothing will hinder you from seeing him. Not even your education, not even your profession, not even your status in the society, not even what you possess or what you have, not even the title that you have. The moment you decide and you desire and you determine to see Jesus, then you will see him. And I want to pray and believe that today I'm speaking to people who want to see Jesus in their lives. Therefore, don't allow anything. Don't allow even the crowd, those who are around you. Don't mind about what people will say. Just have that desire and know that you have an opportunity to see him. The Bible tells us that whoever comes to God, whoever comes to Jesus, he will not be rejected. The way you are, you just need to come to Jesus, to submit to Jesus. And you allow him. And the moment he calls on your name, because he knows you, then you need to answer. You need to submit to him. Submit yourself to him. Invite him into your life. Not only into your life, but also into your home. The home of your life is the heart. Invite him into your heart. When you have Jesus, you have everything. There is nothing you can hide from Jesus. He is able to change. He is able to transform. He is able to renew. And he is able to restore. The statement that Jesus makes in verse number 10 it means that Zacchaeus was one of the lost people. Walikuwa mepotea. Alikuwa mepotea. Akuwa mepata wakovu. Na katika maisha yake, katika mienendo yake, katika matendo yake, katika kazi zake. Alikuwa mepotea. But this time around, Jesus has found him. And he has saved him. So Zacchaeus received Jesus with a lot of joy. The Bible tells, tells us that he received him. He welcomed him gladly. He rejoiced with a lot of excitement. And when you hear the call of God, the call of Jesus upon your life, then you need to answer it with a lot of excitement. Because of course, God cannot call you for nothing. God cannot call you for nothing. He calls you with a purpose. 
he calls you with a reason. And his purpose is a divine one. His reason is a divine one. And because Zacchaeus was lost, Jesus wanted to restore his life, to rescue his life, and to rescue him from death and from judgment. He called him. And today, as you hear the voice of God, the Bible tells us, when you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. And wherever you need him, then you will find him. And then even before you see him, he has already seen you. You just need to surrender yourself to him. When you find him, then you will find a change in your life. Because he's able. He can and he will. Learning from Zacchaeus and Jesus. We see that Jesus knows your name. Jesus invites all people and gives them a chance. A chance to change their lives. So he calls them and he welcomes them. Jesus values your life. Values you. And that's why the Bible records that whoever to him, he will be accepted. He will not be rejected. And we can go through the Bible and we see such people. You look at Nicodemus, a man who was very well versed with the law. He was a teacher of the law. But at night he comes to Jesus seeking to know what is salvation. How can I be born again? And of course Jesus could discredit him. But Jesus received him and explained everything to do with salvation. In John Chapter 3. Whoever comes to Jesus cannot be rejected. You look at the woman who met Jesus at the well. Actually, it's Jesus who found her at the well. He chose a maji. Yesu na mwambia mwana mke msamaria ni patie maji nini. Then the conversation goes, goes through, goes through, goes through. Jesus reveals the secrets of this woman. And he tells her about everything in regard to her life. And at the end of the day, the woman was changed, the woman was transformed. And she went about telling other people about the news of Jesus Christ, a man who can change life. Saul, the persecutor of the church, encountered Jesus in a vision. And his life was transformed. His name was changed to Paul. And he became the greatest witness of, witness of Christ. The Paul whom we read in the Bible. The one who used to persecute the church became the pillar of a church. The pioneer of a church. Our God is able to change. If things are going wrong in your life, then you just need to accept him. You just need to welcome him. The Bible in Revelation tells us that he's standing at the door, he's knocking. If you open the door for him, then he will come in. And he knocked at the door of Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus akakubali kufungua maisha yake, kufungua moyo wake, kufungua nyumba yake kwa Yesu Christo. And things changed. As we read in the story, not only Zacchaeus was saved, but even his household, meaning his wife and his children, 
and his servants and everybody else who was in that house. Because the Bible says that salvation has come to this house. Go on, yes, was a few son. When you have Jesus, then you and your household will be saved. And when you are saved by Jesus, then it means that your life is safe. You don't have to fear, you don't have to, to, to live in worry. There is this thief who was at the point of death. He was dying actually because he was already on the cross together with Jesus and the other thief. But he made a cry to Jesus. He told him, Son of God, remember me in paradise. Or oh, remember me. Then Jesus turned to him and he said to him, then today you will be with me in paradise. The man, his life was rescued at the point of death. When you come to Jesus, he will receive you. If you have the desire to see Jesus in your life, he will, he can. And because we have the testimony of the people whom Jesus changed, I've gone through the Zacchaeus, the Codemas, the well, the woman, and of course many other examples in the Bible. They met Jesus, they received a change in their lives. And Jesus wants to be with you. That's why he told Jesus, he told Zacchaeus that I must stay at your house today. Meaning that he wanted to spend time with Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus, out of his busy schedule, akakubali. Labda alikuwa na appointment hapa na pale, alikuwa na kazi anapasa kufanya, alikuwa na reports anataka kusubmit that day. But he forgot about that. He gave Jesus a chance. And this chance transformed his life for the better. Give Jesus a chance in your life. And you see things working well. When you have Jesus, open your heart and your mind to him. Zacchaeus opened his heart, his mind, and he made a confession. When you have Jesus, when it comes to times of joy, you will give thanks to him. When you have Jesus and you're facing temptations, then Jesus will give you strength to overcome. When you have Jesus and you feel discouraged, then you will seek comfort, you will seek uh, encouragement in him. When you have Jesus and your heart is troubled, Jesus told the disciples, do not be troubled. Musifataike. Musiwe na shaka, musiwe na waswasi. Because he offers help. And his help comes through the Holy Spirit. Jesus was telling the disciples this. When he revealed to them that I am going, I'm leaving you. Na walikuwa na babaika, walikuwa na wasuasi. Sasa ukienda, tutachwa na nani. And he told them, then when I go, I will send you an helper. That is the Holy Spirit. So when you have Jesus in your heart, you are not without help. You are with help. And God tells us that he is the present help at times of trouble, at times of need. In life, you face times of confusion. You don't know what to do over certain issues, of certain circumstances. But when you have Jesus and you talk to him, then he will give you guidance. He will give you direction. He will show you what to do. And your life will be at ease. Allow Jesus to take over in your life. Allow Jesus to reign in your life. Allow Jesus to be with you 
even in your house, invite him. And you will see change, you will see transformation. And things will be straightened up for you. Bow your head in the presence of God and tell God, I have heard your word. I need you in my life. I need a change. And it's only you who can offer this change. When you have Jesus, your, minds are, uh, your mind is opened up, your eyes are opened up, and you're able to see far. You're able to see beyond today. You're able to see the future. And this is what God can do. He is able. He is able. So just talk to him in a moment and tell God, I need you in my life. I need you in my life. I need you in my life. And I pray that you help me to overcome every obstacle and every barrier that does not allow me to see you. I pray that that barrier will be broken. I pray that that barrier will be uh, 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 broken and nullified. I pray that that obstacle will be removed in the name of Jesus Christ. As I humble myself, as I surrender myself to you. Because, Lord, I want to see you in my life. I want to see you in my family. I want to see you in my business. I want to see you. I want to see you today. Not even other day, but today. Because when I see you today, I know that tomorrow is taken care of. I know that next week is taken care of. I know that next year, next years are taken care of for my father. Lord, I need you today. Today. Right now, I need you. Have you aware in my life? In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for everyone who is making this kind of a prayer in your presence. And because you are able, Lord, I pray that you will touch their hearts, their minds, and their souls, O oh God. And I pray that you will have your way in their lives, O oh God. Enter their hearts, Lord. Enter their minds, O oh my dear Redeemer. And wherever they have welcomed you, Lord, I pray that you will dine with them in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, my Father, that, Lord, you will save them in the name of Jesus Christ. Save them from every disaster. Save them from every judgment. Save them from every trouble and every confusion. Save them, Lord, from every attack of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. Even them that are not born again, Lord, we pray for their salvation today in the name of Jesus Christ. Because each and every one, Lord, is a son of Abraham, O oh God. My Lord and my Father, we honor you and we glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray and we believe. Everybody say amen. Amen and amen. I want to appreciate you once again for joining us in the service. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord do good to you. May the Lord keep you safe. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord grant you victory, peace, and success in this life. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Now we can share the words of grace to one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And amen. Enjoy the rest of your day. I want to wish you a very blessed weekend in Jesus' name.